Welcome to Level Up Mechanics. In today's video, I'm gonna be upgrading the front brakes on this third gen Toyota Tundra. We'll be installing cross-drilled and slotted rotors and ceramic brake pads from R1 Concepts. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you thought the content was useful. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get started. Sorry about the constraints, but I'm working in my garage. The weather outside is really bad and I need to get this done now. So just bear with me in this video. But here I'm gonna show you the rotors and the pads that we'll be installing on this 2015 Toyota Tundra today. Uh, these items are from R1 Concepts. I bought the Geomet cross-drilled and slotted rotors right here. Uh, these are directional, so make sure you pay attention to the last letter on the part. If you see, I know it's upside down. But you can see there's an L at the end of that box, and there's an R at the end of that box. Uh, that means they're directional. The L will be installed on the driver's side. The R will be installed on the passenger side. Again, these are the R1 Concepts Geomet cross-drilled and slotted rotors. In addition to that, I picked up the brake hardware kit that they provide as well for a couple extra bucks. These are the retaining pins and clips and springs uh, for the front brake calipers and brake pads. Here we have the ceramic brake pads. These ceramic pads will help keep brake dust to a minimum and also noise to a minimum as well. So the first step is to remove the wheels and secure the front end on some jack stands to be safe. So I'm gonna go do that real quick and then we'll break down the front brakes and get them ready for the new parts. Now it's time to start disassembling everything so we can replace the brake pads and brake rotors. The first thing we're gonna do is remove the brake pads. And in order to do that, first we need to take this locking clip off of the back side of the brake caliper. So we'll just pull it out by hand, one out of each pin. Then we'll have the retaining clip removed. Next thing we need to do is to remove the pins. So we'll have a top pin and a bottom pin. They should be pretty simple. This one I can remove by hand. And the bottom one might be a little bit harder because it's spring loaded with this spring right here, but you should be able to still get it out. If you have a hard time, you could possibly use some pliers just to help pull the retaining pin out. Now that we have both pins out, the next step is to remove this retaining spring right here on the bottom. Pro tip, it's probably best to do brakes one side at a time. That way, if you forget how something goes back together, you can always use the other side as reference. Now that we have the retaining spring out, we're gonna use either a flat uh, screwdriver or in my case, a small pry bar. And we're going to get between the rotor and the pad so we can press against the rotor and push the pad back. This will push the pistons into the caliper to give you clearance in order to install the new thicker brake pads. So just bite onto the lip of the rotor and you'll do this step for both the inner and outer brake pad. Now that the pistons are pressed all the way into the caliper on the outside, we're gonna take the outer pad out and we're gonna install the new outer pad. Now, we're not installing this 100% just yet, we're just using it as a spacer, so that way we can press the inner pad uh, and the pistons for the inner caliper in place without pushing the outer caliper pistons back out. It's always good to have a pocket screwdriver on hand, just in case your pad goes in too far and you need to assistance pulling it back out into place so you can continue where you left off now that the brake pads are removed and all four pistons on the caliper are pressed back 
The next step is to remove the caliper from the steering knuckle. In order to do this, you're going to need to disconnect the wheel speed sensor up here uh, from the bracket that holds your brake line. There's a 10 millimeter bolt and a little plastic retaining clip on the other side that you'll remove to disconnect the wheel speed sensor. Pocket screwdriver makes removing plastic clips super easy. Next up, we're going to remove this 12 millimeter bolt that holds the bracket to the knuckle for the brake line. Now that the wheel speed sensor harness is loose and the brake line is loose from the steering knuckle, we can take two 17 millimeter bolts on the back side of the caliper off. These bolts hold the caliper to the steering knuckle. Again, there are 17 millimeter bolts and you're gonna have one on top, one on bottom. There's the top bolt. Here's the bottom bolt. Now we're gonna take our caliper and just rest it on top of the upper control arm. Uh, if you're not comfortable doing that, just secure the caliper out of the way. Don't let it hang because you can damage your brake line. But now that we have the caliper off, the next step is to remove the brake rotor. There's a really easy way to remove the rotor, especially if it's rusted onto the wheel hub assembly. Pro tip is to use a spare bolt that has the same thread pattern as these holes that you'll find on the face of the rotor. And what you'll do is you'll just thread the bolt into the hole and this will pull the rotor off of the wheel hub. Now the old rotor is removed, we can install the new brake rotor. Now remember, with these new brake rotors, they are directional since they're cross-drilled and slotted. You're gonna have a right side or a passenger side, and you'll have a left side or a driver side. The last letter in the part number designates whether it's for left driver side or right passenger side. This one is R, for the last letter of the part number, so we're gonna install it on the passenger side. Now that the rotor's in place, you can take a lug nut and thread it back onto a lug stud just to hold the rotor in place while we put the caliper back on. Now we'll take the brake caliper, place it back into place and start the bolts on the back side that will connect it to the steering knuckle. Now that the bolts on the back side of the caliper are tightened up, we can install the brake pads. Here is the outer brake pad. And here's the inner brake pad. Here is the wear indicator for the inner brake pad. Once the thickness of the brake pad gets low enough to where this indicator rubs against the brake rotor, You'll start hearing squeaking noises every time you press the brakes. This is basically the car telling you that the pads are ready to be replaced because they're pretty much spent. Now that the pads are installed, we'll install the hardware. We're going to put the top pin through. And you may need to press the pad in or out just a little bit 
just to get the holes to line up. If you have a hard time doing that, I suggest pocket screwdriver will help you adjust the pad where it needs to be for you to put the retaining pin through the caliper and the brake pads. You want to make sure that the hole at the end of the, the pin is positioned in the, such a way that you can get this clip back in on the back side to hold these pins into place. So, the clip will go like this. The end of the clip is pointing in an upward angled direction, so we want our hole to be pointing downward slightly. Next up, we're going to put this retaining spring on the bottom of the brake pads. Make sure you orient it in the correct way to where this little hump sits on top of the brake pad and allows you to put the pin through the hole and through the retaining spring. And they will clip into the second hole on the brake pads, on the inner and outer brake pads right here. Now we'll use this retaining clip that I showed you earlier. We will guide it through both of the retaining pins and clip into this back hole right here at the center of the caliper on the back side. Now that the brake rotor is installed and the new brake pads are installed on the caliper with new brake hardware, we can go ahead and remove the lug nut that we put on to hold the brake rotor into place. We can install the 12 millimeter bolt for the bracket that holds the brake line onto the steering knuckle. And we can install the 10 millimeter bolt that goes onto the bracket that holds the wheel speed sensor harness into place. In addition, we can put the plastic retaining clip back into place on the back side of the bracket. That's pretty much it. Now we can go ahead and put the wheel back on, lower the vehicle, and then tighten the lug nuts to 97 foot-pounds of torque. The next step is to pump the brake pedal so that way the caliper pistons will go back into position. If you don't pump the brake pedal and you try to move the car, you will not have brakes. Not for a couple of pumps anyway, so make sure you pump the pedal before you even think about moving the car. After which we just take this vehicle for a test drive and break in the rotors and pads. And these brake pads and rotors are really, really high quality. Uh, they are available on Amazon, so I'll make sure to provide a link in the description below if you're curious about these products. These are definitely an excellent option. Check out the links below if you're interested in purchasing this for your vehicle setup. All right, guys, I'm gonna go pump the brakes now and uh, take it for a quick test drive. Also, don't do this job in the Texas heat when it's 100% humid because it's been raining all day because it sucks. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Feel free to subscribe and don't forget to like the video if you thought the content was useful. I appreciate your time and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.